once again to the view from the Midwest. It's time for another Force Friday edition, so we're going to be talking about Star Wars, and let's get right into it. First of all, I want to just kind of preface this with saying, uh, those of you who kind of know me, even in my online persona, or, or, or even those of you who know me in real life, know that most of the time I kind of take a, a whole perspective of, if you, if you didn't enjoy something, or if you have a certain argument, I fully respect that, and I'm not going to try to change that. But that's no fun when you're trying to make a video, so I'm going to kind of discuss some of the things that I've seen pop up over and over and over again with regards to The Force Awakens that people are constantly complaining about, whether they didn't like the movie or whether they did like the movie, and I don't necessarily agree with those points, so let's get right into it. First off, we've got the Star Killer base basically being an upgraded Death Star. Well, yes, it is. I don't necessarily see... What is so wrong with that? Because everybody that wants to complain wants to say, oh, well, Episode 7 was basically just a rip-off of the original trilogy, or it was just a rip-off of the uh, Episode 4. Well, I, it was an homage. There, they did take certain beats, certain things, and just kind of turn them around a little bit, twist them a little bit. But quite frankly, you all are to blame for that because you all despised the prequels so much that Disney decided, okay, well, what we're going to do with this is basically take everything that we know that people liked, put it in a different time frame, put it in a different context, put it with different characters, and there you go. And everybody loved it. But not everybody, obviously, because everybody's complaining about it, too. And Firstly, I don't think it's that big a deal. I didn't think it was just a blatant ripoff. I thought that they twisted and changed enough to where it wasn't just exactly the same. Secondly, I don't see the big deal with having another super weapon. You have to have something in there that puts a lot of people in danger. Because everybody's out there like, oh, well, they could have just had a bigger fleet. And they could have done this, or they could have done that. But you're not putting enough people in danger to really worry an entire galaxy. When you just blew up the entire New Republic, that means you mean business. And if you've read Lost Stars, and, and, and I know that Lost Stars doesn't have anything to do directly with Episode 7, but they do an incredibly good job of explaining from different people's perspectives whether they agree with it or whether they kind of convince themselves that they agree with it or whether they're completely against it. They, they do a good job of explaining kind of why... Uh, another Death Star would have been built after the first one was destroyed. And they do a decent job of explaining why the first one, and from the Imperial side, was necessary. Because they were taking the whole idea of, like, oh, well, if we threaten an entire, uh, an entire planet, then nobody will ever oppose us. Well, the Imperials are arrogant. They, they, they never think that anybody has any kind of strength except them. So if they take the mistakes of other people and build upon that and make little changes to where they don't think that they'll make the same mistake, well, the New Order did the same thing. They said, okay, well, the Empire had the right idea, but they were too lax in terms of what they thought of their enemy. So we'll make these changes and we'll make that change. And we think that, quite frankly, this will be a significant upgrade to the point to where nobody will be able to take us down. And I'm going to be getting into another argument, but basically they were right. And it ultimately ended up that luck played into the destruction. Now, going forward, if they have another super weapon in Episode Nine, then yes, obviously you're taking it to the to new levels uh, where you basically are just kind of copying story beats. But as of right now, if this is the only main super weapon that they have and then they kind of shrink it down, focus on the characters, I'm perfectly fine with that because I don't necessarily think it was just taking the Death Star idea and making it towards the new movie. I think that they were justified, quite frankly, in having another super weapon. The next one that I'm going to touch on real briefly is the idea that Finn could fight with a lightsaber against Kylo Ren. This is a huge one for people who don't like it, and I understand where they're coming from because as of right now, we are led to believe that he is probably not Force-sensitive, although I am starting to believe that he might because I think that those screams that you hear when he is looking up into the sky, I don't think that those are on Maz Kanata's planet. I kind of think that he's hearing the screams that are going to take place 
uh, from all those star systems that will be destroyed. So maybe he's got a little bit of force sensitivity and he just doesn't know it yet. Uh, that will be something that might play out in the future. But if you give it only the facts that we know given Episode 7, I don't think it's that much of a stretch that he could use that kind of weapon because regardless of the fact that they made a big joke that he was a janitor and this and that, that's that's a military thing. Everybody has to have a job on the base and not everybody's going to get the glamour positions. That doesn't mean that he didn't go through training in weapons. That doesn't mean that he didn't go through training in self-defense and combat. So he would have known how to use melee weapons. So the fact that it's a lightsaber is just a different kind of weapon. He defended himself fairly well, but he didn't necessarily even do all that well against his own stormtrooper because he wasn't all that good at fighting. He could defend himself, and that's basically what he was doing against Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren was toying with him. He was he burned him on the shoulder because he was screwing around with him, and Kylo Ren was injured as well, but he still had the arrogance, again, what those bad guys have, the, the dark side users and the First Order and the Empire that they all have. They are all arrogant to a certain extent, so Kylo Ren's toying with him, and then when he finally had enough, he takes a couple whacks, knocks the saber away, slices his back open. That isn't much of a fight. Finn was basically defending himself and standing up for his friend, who he didn't necessarily know was alive or or would ever regain consciousness. So he's got a certain uh, anger within him, and we've seen it in the past, whether you're a Jedi or whether you're not, when you get a little bit angry, you get that extra motivation, and you get out there and you do some things that you didn't necessarily think that you could do. That's all that was. It wasn't him sitting out there like a badass swordsman that he was taking down people left and right. He never really stood all that much of a chance in any of the fights that he had with a lightsaber. So all it boiled down to was he was a stormtrooper. He had received training in combat and self-defense, and that's basically what he knew how to use the weapon as, and that's all that it ended up being. Everybody wants to make it a much bigger deal than it necessarily needs to be. The last one I'm going to touch on here is the huge one, apparently. Uh, it, it was kind of a big deal when the movie was first released, and then as we've gone on, it died off a little bit, and now it's picking itself up again. Captain Phasma. Listen, I like Captain Phasma, but I will admit that she was a completely useless character in that particular movie. But everybody wants to take it to the nth level, to basically where it's like, oh, well, they wasted the actress. You don't know what they're going to have her do in future stories, so you don't know that it's a waste of an actress, because she signed a contract to be in a certain number of films. We don't necessarily know that she'll make it to episode 9, but we don't know that she won't become a major player in 10, 11, and 12, and all that. We don't know what her contract is necessarily for right offhand, so we don't know what her story is going to be like. So that argument goes right out the window. Ne next, they basically want to say, well, she, she should have done something. They made her out to be this badass character, and all she did was lower the shields because she had a gun to her head. Ah, you just said it. She had a gun to her head. Three of them, in fact. One of, Not all three of them might have been up against her neck like this, but I'm sorry, I don't care what kind of military training you've had. I don't care if this is a film universe and you're supposed to be some super warrior. If you have three guns trained on you at all times, there is no getting out of that situation without you going down like a chump. And I think that that would be a ridiculous end for the character just over shields. Because I brought it up with the Imperial arrogance, and it comes back here again with her. She flat out stated it in the movie. She went ahead and lowered the shields because she was trying to spare her own life, which quite frankly is the right decision within the context of everything going around. But she flat out tells all three characters, Chewbacca, Finn, Han, everybody that's right in front of her, that this is a stupid plan. You might have gotten me to lower the shields, but what are you going to do? You're not going to get out of here because these are going to be stormed by troopers. You're going to be killed, and the shields being down doesn't matter any. And quite frankly, she would have been right. The only thing that she wasn't right about was the fact that uh, since nobody was alerted to their presence, the stormtroopers didn't come in and they didn't kill the three people, at least initially. She still th thought that they would probably be able to because Kylo Ren eventually figured out that they were there. He led a group of storm 
Federal Troopers to try to track him down, and ultimately they didn't find him. So you can take that into account if you want to say that that scene is a little bit silly. But everything else that she said there was crystal clear and perfectly correct in her character's mind. She said that this is a silly plan, lowering the shields won't do anything because you're not going to have any effect. They didn't have any effect. It took the bombing, which was quite frankly just flat out lucky that they had managed to get enough bombs, which she probably didn't even know that they had. They blew up that, uh, that octagonal thing. I can't remember the oscillator is what they called it. They blew a hole in that. Until then, the ships were having absolutely no effect whatsoever. So, I mean, unless you had a bunch of Star Destroyers, which the First Order knew that the Resistance didn't have, bombarding that area, there was going to be absolutely no effect, regardless of whether they had shields or not. The shields were basically up there just to prevent the annoyance of the attack and prevent the loss of uh, fighters, which they had to ultimately employ and try to take out some of the X-Wing fighters once they got through the shields. But lowering the shields was going to have absolutely no effect until a, an, an absolutely lucky occurrence happened in terms of blowing a hole in the side of the oscillator and then Poe going in there and doing all the damage from the inside. Because if that doesn't happen, the First Order was about to win. So Captain Phasma would have been right. And in, in, instead, everybody says, oh, well, she's a useless character and she looks weak because she lowered the shields. I, I don't care if this is a film universe or not. I can fully justify it within my own mind that she had three guns pointed at her. She didn't think that lowering the shield was going to have any possible uh, effect in, in a negative terms towards her base because she didn't envision anything possibly even doing that much damage that the resistance could have had on their side. And it was absolute luck that proved her otherwise. So we don't know what her character is going to have going forward. Forward. We don't know uh, that she won't be become what everybody wanted her to be, and, and we don't see things from her point of view because we know how things turned out. Within her context, within her viewpoint of where everything was happening, everything that she did was perfectly justified as far as I'm concerned, and, and quite frankly, I have no problems with the character, and quite frankly, I, I don't understand why she looks weak and she looks useless, comes off as useless, but Boba Fett somehow managed to turn into this badass, uh, just beloved character when he was in the film for probably less than she was, and maybe even said less, but the only thing that apparently everybody clings to is the disintegrations line, which... I don't know. When I watched it, I didn't find... I, I liked Boba Fett, but I liked him because by the time I managed to come around to the series, he had already kind of been built up. But I did like the, the look of him. But the disintegrations line never held anything for me. So the fact that that is what people cling to in terms of saying, well, Boba Fett is awesome and Captain Phasma was a waste. Well, we don't know that. If they don't do anything with her going forward, then yes, that she was a waste. To me, the only complaint that people have in terms of being uh, justified in their feelings is she was over-marketed, she was plastered all over everything just because she had a cool look, but in the end, she is just a captain, she is just an imperial officer, she just has a bunch of cool armor, maybe we'll find out why in the future, but if you had put a, an imperial uniform on her, nobody would have cared that she did what she did. But instead, because she's got the cool armor, everybody wants to say, well, she's a waste of a character, and she looks weak, and this and that. Uh, it's not true. Captain Phasma, I still think, is going to be a very interesting character going forward. I just hope that they have learned from their marketing mistakes, because they did put her on too much for what she was ultimately in the film. That is the view from the Midwest. I know everybody's got some comments to put on these kind of issues, so leave them down in the comments section. Get that conversation rolling, whether on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, comment, rate, and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, as I said, on Facebook or YouTube. But until the next time, I'll see you then. Thank you.